A battle worth fighting for. H. Lee Moffat. Opening the door for a cure. Closing the doors on cancer. Moffat words. A strong, well-rounded education has been the backbone of any success I have achieved. Teachers and professors taught me how to think and challenged me to do better. Those educators helped me share a more informed view of the world. Who is H. Lee Moffat? Why is he considered a leader? What is his legacy? We'll be answering these questions during this short documentary. Mr. Moffat was born in 1941, and he was raised in Tampa, Florida. Over an email, he shared with us that he felt very proud of his town and his alma maters. He attended the University of South Florida, where he received his undergraduate degree in laws. Later on, because of his multiple accomplishments, he was awarded with a Juris Doctorate degree from the Cumberland School of Law in Alabama. He started to show leadership skills at a very young age by getting involved in civic and community activities such as Big Brother. When we asked him about how these activities helped him to become a leader, he stated, A good leader needs to be a good listener. We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should listen twice as much as we talk. Moffat words, I have been mentored by many people who inspired me during key periods of my life. My parents told me I could do anything if I was willing to work hard, get a good education, and never give up on my hopes and dreams. All my life, I have been touched by friends and colleagues who helped me during tough times. With a lot of effort, Mr. Moffat starts practicing law and going up in the political ladder to advocate for the citizens of Florida and the House of Representatives. By 1970, Mr. Moffat was well known in the Tampa community not only as a witty and honest lawyer, but also as a strong candidate for the Democratic Party to represent Tampa in the House of Representatives. Suddenly, when he was 29 years old, a series of strange symptoms prompted him to go to his physician. He received shocking news, cancer in the left knee. Two of his physicians recommended him to have a knee amputation, but a third one recommended a tumor resection and this is the recommendation he followed. In order to do this, he was advised to travel outside Tampa since there was no comprehensive cancer center available in Central Florida. This event was a huge life-changing one, prompting him to redirect his life to public service. With the help of two excellent friends and mentors, Ralph Haben and Senator Wilburn Boyd. Lee Moffat was a nerd. He wore white socks, he had funny colored Bermudas, and everybody called him Woody Allen in law school. And then he got cancer, and all of a sudden it wasn't funny anymore. And he lived through that, and I think he made a vow. And one day, he was elected to the legislature, and he drove us slap crazy for three years until we gave him the money. And from a $600,000 appropriation to study, look what you have today. Moffat words, I was about 32 years old when three friends about my age had cancer. They all died and I resolved to fight to create a cancer center so that others would not suffer as they did. While battling with his own mortality and the loss of good friends because of cancer, Mr. Moffat was determined to use public service to help his community achieve the health care they deserved. Mr. Moffat was persistent. As a good leader, he never quit and was stubborn to pursue these goals until the right people heard him. Many years ago, I spent an evening out at the Hope Lodge with my mother, cooking dinner with the families of cancer patients at the cancer center. And there was one woman in particular who, when she realized that my father was Lee Moffat, came and embraced me in a giant hug and said that my father was a miracle and that every day when she walked by the sign to the cancer center, she thanked God for H. Lee Moffat and said that if it wasn't for the cancer center, her husband would not be alive today and warmly told me that she thought he was an angel. In 1974, Mr. Moffat won his first political race. This was the starting of a very successful public career where he advocated for not only improving health care for Tampa, but also for wetland protection 
education enhancements, protection from hazardous waste materials, and other social matters of equal importance. Between 1977 and 1985, Mr. Moffat had to deal with the death of two good friends and mentors, as well as the loss of his first aid due to cancer. This experience made him a zealot to fight for the creation of a cancer center right here in Tampa. Moffat words, never, never, never give up on your dreams. Nothing in the world can take the place of perseverance and persistence. Ignore those who will try to tell you it can be done. In the Tampa Times, strong support on Mr. Moffat's idea of having a comprehensive cancer center in Tampa called his drive a magnificent obsession. His vision remained he never gave up because he believed in a better future for those suffering of cancer. In 1978, Mr. Moffat was determined to achieve his goals. He owed to the memory of those friends he lost for cancer to go the extra mile and fight in the Florida House of Representatives for $600,000 of planning money to create a center based in the big comprehensive cancer center models. M.D. Anderson in Sloan Kettering in New York. There was a lot of opposition by the local Hillsborough County big hospitals, especially Tampa General, because of fear that a project like this could devastate financially this big hospital. At first, his proposal was delayed. Nevertheless, in 1980, it passed when Mr. Moffat became the Speaker of the House. Using the proposal budget approved before, the initial study concluded to build a 150-bed facility inside of the USF campus. Mr. Moffat worked endlessly day and night for building the Cancer Center proposal, and finally, all his efforts paid off when in June 1981, the Florida Legislature gave $3.5 million to plan and design the Cancer Center. As part of the project, some people invested as board members of the Future Cancer Center project. I think it's pretty fair to say, if it wasn't for the kind of person that Lee Moffitt is, I probably never would have been here. Um, I think a great deal about him from the standpoint of his vision for the future. Moffitt words, my hope was to create what would become the best cancer center in the world and build a research team to discover treatments that would save lives. In 1983, a funding of $45 million trust was secured to start the construction of the center inside the USF campus. The groundbreaking ceremony was January 24, 1983. On October 1986, Moffitt Cancer Center opened his doors to attend outpatient and inpatient cancer patients. In 1995, the Moffitt Cancer Research Center was added, and in 2001, the National Cancer Institute officially recognized Moffitt Cancer Center as one of the 41 centers in the country, and the only facility with such designation in Florida. I believe that Mr. Moffat does qualify as a great leader. And there are a lot of um, adjectives that can be, can be used to describe a leader, some of which I think are that you have tremendous focus and that you have a lot of commitment. Whatever your goals might be, take a lot of hard work and tenacity. And that means staying after something over and over and over again, no matter what obstacles you confront. Even when you're down about it, you have to lift yourself up and lift your spirits and keep going. And I think a true leader has these qualities. As a leader, Mr. Moffat still remains positive, stubborn, humble, and goal-focused. When asked about his greatest legacy, Mr. Moffat said that it was his daughter, who recently received her PhD in English literature. He also stated that a good leader has to dig, research and gather all facts before making decisions to follow the golden rule of doing unto others as you would have them doing unto you and also advise to be tolerant of the views and opinions of others. As Moffat says, history is a good guide. Study history and the profiles of great leaders. There is much that can be learned from the greats who helped shape the world in positive ways. We can learn from the mistakes of others. We can also learn from their successes.